Giovannino Vagabond, the great traveller, travelled and travelled. One day, he chanced upon a country with an un in the front. What kind of country is this? He asked one of the denizens who was lazing in the shade of a tree. The citizen replied by pulling a pencil sharpener out of his pocket, which he showed to Giovannino in the palm of his hand. Do you see this? It's a pencil sharpener. Completely wrong. It's actually a pencil unsharpener. That is, a pencil sharpener with an un in the front. We use these to make pencils longer when they're worn down to a stub. They're very useful in schools, of course. Magnificent, said Giovannino. What else do you have here? We have clothes unhangers. You must mean something like a clothes hanger. Well, clothes hangers aren't particularly useful if you don't have a coat to hang, hang on them. With our unhangers, everything's different. You don't have to hang anything on them because there's already something hanging. If you need a coat, just go and take it off. If someone needs a jacket, they don't even have to go buy one. They just go to the unhanger and unhang it. There are clothes unhangers for summer, and clothes unhangers for winter, clothes unhangers for men, and clothes unhangers for women. We save lots of money that way. How wonderful! What else? Then we have the uncamera, which instead of taking pictures, does cartridges, so you can laugh. And of course, we have the uncannon. Oh, that's scary. Not at all. The uncannon is just the opposite of a cannon. It's good for unwaging war. How does it work? It's super simple. Even a child could use it. If there's a war, we blow the unbugle, we fire the uncannon, and the war is immediately unwaged. How wonderful. The country with an un in the front. of Sant'Antonio on the Lake Maggiore, there lived a little old woman who was very good at making jam, so good that her services were sought after in Valcuvia, in Vatavaglia, in Valdumetina, and in Valpoverina. When it was jam season, people came from all the different mountain valleys, sat on the low stone wall, looked out at the view over the lake, picked a few raspberries from the raspberry bushes, and then called out to the famous little old jam maker, Apollonia! What is it? Would you make me a pot of blueberry jam? At your service. Would you help me make a nice plum jam? Right away. Apollonia, that little old lady, really did have golden fingers, and she made the finest jams in the Varese area in all of the canton Ticino. One time, an old woman from Arcomedia came to see her. That woman was so poor that she didn't have so much as a paper wrapper of peach pits to make the jam with, and so along the way she filled her apron with chestnut husks. Apollonia, would you make me a pot of jam? With chestnut husks? I couldn't find anything else. Oh well, let me try. Apollonia did her best, and in the end, she made the finest jam imaginable out of chestnut husks. Another time, that same woman from Arcomedia couldn't even find chestnut husks, because when the dry leaves fell, they'd covered them up, so this time she arrived with an apron full of stinging nettles. Apollonia, would you make me a pot of jam? With stinging nettles? I couldn't find anything else. Oh well. We'll see how it turns out. Apollonia took the bag of stinging nettles, poured plenty of sugar over them, boiled them the way only she knew how, and made a jam out of them that was finger-licking delicious. Because Apollonia, that little old lady, had fingers of gold and silver, and she could have made a fine jam out of rocks. One time, the emperor himself came through, and insisted on tasting some of Apollonia's jam. She gave him a bowlful, but after the first spoonful, the emperor stopped eating in disgust because a fly had fallen into it. This is disgusting, said the emperor. If the jam was no good, that fly would never have fallen into it in the first place, replied Apollonia. 
but by now the emperor has lost his temper and he ordered his soldiers to cut off apollonia's hands at that the people rose up in rebellion and told the emperor that if he had apollonia's hands cut off then there'd be nothing for it but to chop his crown off and his head with it because they could find heads to serve as the emperor on any street street corner but golden hands like apollonia's were far more rare precious and the emperor was forced to pack his bags and run away <laughs>